It's definitely not a regular through hike. That's for sure. You definitely should not underestimate this trail. Like you could fall down a canyon and potentially no one would find you for a while. I think a lot of the gnarly stuff is like really fun actually though. At least yeah. it is fun. So much more dense with cool stuff than I expected. This whole trail has been about problem solving. I didn't want to have a well-worn path to follow the whole way. I wanted to kind of figure this stuff out on my own. Everybody can find something out here for themselves. It's just about finding the thing that you enjoy doing and looking for the metaphors in it. I'm Mike Coronella. I am the co-founder or co-creator of the Hey Duke Trail. Um, it's a route that uh, we kind of accidentally came up with while we were wandering across the desert trying to figure out why there were five national parks in southern Utah instead of one big one. See what's in between them. The first trip we did was 20 years ago and the idea was we just wanted to really show off southern Utah and kind of get loud about the public land issues and you know why there was all this open space. And that took us 94 days um, to get to Zion. It was a really slow pace. Uh, we went through a bunch of places that literally we couldn't find anybody who could tell us if you could get from point A to point B. So we had a lot of wiggle room involved in case we had to turn around, in case we got lost. We didn't have GPS's. We found the uh, seven and a half minute topo maps were wrong a lot out here. They'd never been ground truthed. So anyway, so we get to Zion and Backpacker Magazine ended up doing an article about that walk. And they're like, so you're gonna make this a trail? So that's when it became the Hayduke Trail. National Geographic obviously has written it a couple times as being one of the ten epic walks on the planet. I, I know even the Triple Crowners come off this and just like blown away. Um, it's hard, you know, logistically it's very difficult. You guys are going to deal with that. Yeah, we'll figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> Alright, day one and mile one on our track across the Colorado Plateau. 800 miles on the Hay Duke Trail. We're starting here just outside of Arches. I'm starting with four other friends. Behind me is Travis. Yo, yo. Hi, Travis. <laughs> then Sarah. Did I find and that Ashley. One These three are just hiking through Arches with us. But then after that, I'm continuing on with. The infamous Fitty Shrimp. We've got a history together from the PNT. Hi. And a little bit from Youper Tours. <laughs> Youper Tours, episode four, the Fitty Shrimp episode. Check it out. He thinks it's the best one. I've, I've teetered between two, I've teetered between 1.5 and about four on the Stoke level in preparation for this thing. But I gotta tell you, I'm at a solid seven today. Oh, that's good. Solid seven on the Stoke meter. Yeah. So uh, we're doing Stokes this year. This is about the end of our first day on the Hay Duke. Pretty short day. How many miles do you think we did? I think 40. <laughs> Probably like three or four. Yeah, we've got a lot longer day tomorrow. We're basically going to do three quarters of arches and get down to the courthouse wash where we'll actually camp inside the park. Day two. How did everybody sleep? Good, man. Good. All right. It was kind all of right. a perfect sleeping temp. All right, all right, yeah, it all was. Right. Even though we had some frost on our sleeping bag this morning, we've got a lot more miles to do today. Probably like 15-ish. So it's gonna be a full day. 
and it'll be a pretty short day tomorrow getting out of arches and then we'll be done with our first national park already this is a pretty short one but it's freaking awesome <laughs> <laughs> supposed to camp down here last night couldn't find a way down and we actually found a decent spot in that wash to yeah. camp was I bad I would say that the stoke level was a little bit lower last night yeah and this morning it's definitely out from last night and the sun was, yeah. the sun was shining that brought the stoke level up a little bit and that might be the entrance and I think we found the only possible way down into this canyon Stroke level restored. <laughs> <laughs> this bush ain't gonna whack itself. <laughs> I, mean, I think the best way is to go down there a little bit and there's that rock right there. And then we'll just mosey our way straight down, I think. <laughs> oh, Jesus. I think. We're just moseying, it's no big deal. It's, it's just a walk in the park, come on. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I've got a fear of heights. It's bad. And that was not one of my favorite things ever that I've done. <laughs> I don't know why I'd hike because inevitably <laughs> I'm gonna run into this. Yeah. Hi. I'm Fiddy Shrimp and this is Hiker Hints. When your water bag springs a leak, and it will, don't throw it away. Just cut the top of it off and use it as a scoopy tool. I'm Mr. Scoopy Tool. Can you tell me your stoke level? It's bad. It's pretty bad. You need a number? I'm at a, like a two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. There's still, There's still something. So what you're saying is it could get worse. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> ah! You do a lower uh, version of this. <laughs> Step on the left over there. Yeah, but that was fun. Okay, I'm gonna sink. <laughs> Jeez, I didn't know you got that there. Sorry. <laughs> 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 Is that like anywhere else to go? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> right where everybody else has jumped. <laughs> this is pretty slippery right here. Yeah. Sometimes fun. you're on a slippery slope. I think it's made that more difficult than it needs to be. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun though. Hi, this is Fiddy Shrimp with another episode of Hiker Hints. Sometimes when you're about to go into town and you need to hitch a ride but you smell like ass, take some sage and rub it all over your person. Nobody will ever know the difference. Hiker Hints from Fiddy Shrimp. Boom! <laughs> go by the trail name number two, which is pound sign two. 
due to the fact that I spent five months an island in the Galapagos covered with bird shit. Studying, helping a guy, a professor, study Darwin's finches. So I walked around that every day, checking cactus for nests. And not only that, at, during that uh, adventure, the ocean was my toilet. My name is Big Wave Dave, that's my trail name. Yeah, my name is Lucas, I don't have a trail name yet. I haven't done a, a big trail yet, so this is my first two hike of anything, so. Yeah, I got mine on the PCT this past summer because I have the ULA Ohm, and this one guy's like, oh, you're that Ohm boy. And I kind of liked it, so I took it. <laughs> I was sitting at Forrester Pass on the PCT and got pretty bad nose bleeding, so I just plugged my nose with toilet paper. And this old guy I met in Kennedy Meadows just saw me and was like, oh yeah, now I have a trail lamp for you. And, and I had no idea what it means. So they gave me the trail lamp plug and I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm Sonic. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm Peacock. I'm Beans. Start with you, Beans. Oh, I eat only beans. <laughs> I got Peacock from wearing a lot of colors on the AT. Um, I had blue hair and did big miles right away, so Sonic. Big miles! <laughs> you all big, love big miles! <laughs> My trail name is Scoops. It's from the PCT last year. The gist is that I have strong feelings about Raisin Bran cereal and the arbitrariness of the scoop as a unit of measurement. And I think that when they switch from one scoop of raisins to two scoops of raisins, they probably didn't change the amount of raisins. They probably just changed the scoop size. On this hike, we're doing something totally different in an environment that none of us are familiar with. But I think it's going to be a good way to test out the ideas that I'm trying to explore with this film. The wilderness is a tool for teaching us how to problem solve. We have such limited resources out here. It teaches us to be resourceful and make the most out of what we have. Everybody can find something out here for themselves. It's just about finding the thing that you enjoy doing and looking for the metaphors in it. It's good for my mental health to, um, um, what is it, take a step back from my life and hike and be disconnected from the things that I worry about any other day. You can kind of go and get away from um, anything that we think of as a modern day convenience. Like challenge yourself and just have to rely on yourself. I try to be a do-it-yourselfer as much as possible and maybe learn things the hard way when there's an easier way. <laughs> the best you can hope to find out here is yourself. And I really believe that that's um, a gift that I've been given with these walks was I got to figure out what I was about because I really was out for a cathartic experience. Okay, now we can do it. High five. Five one high five. You made it. Yay! Ah! <laughs> I feel like we all had to like jump up in here. It's the middle of day three and we're done with arches. Give me a stoke level rating. Woo! Eight, eight 8.5. 8.5? That's yep. the highest it's been? Yep. Mostly because now we got a cheeseburger and beer. Yep. That's exactly why. Oh yeah, baby. Just kidding. <laughs> So this is our route out of the canyon that we shouldn't have been in in the first place. Once we get to the top, then we'll take a road back to about where that mountain is, which is where we took our lunch break at about noon. It's like 5.30 now.